Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, in this episode what we're going to do is continue on with our initialization of DirectX 12, hopefully getting past more than one function. <laughs> Last time we had, um, we spent a lot of time and we ended up getting one function done, but that was because there was a lot of setup to do and, and I was messing around with my main quite a bit. Um, so yeah, uh, before we get started, I'm going to mess with one main just a little bit more. I don't like this right here. Um, this really should be a pointer. And I don't know why I didn't do this before. I should have just done it. Um, but yeah, in order to make this a pointer, I'm not going to use raw pointers in my program if I can avoid it at all. So we're going to make this a smart pointer. You just call it a unique pointer of Direct 3D class, Direct 3D. Uh, that will require that we. See, I believe we need to include Okay guys, so um, there you go. Uh, we've got a, a, an error here. So in order to fix this, so I'll just come up to WinMain and drop in here. Include memory. I think it's just memory. Not memory.h. And that should fix that. There you go. Okay. Um, that's a little bit odd because in my build one, I didn't have to do that. And I'm not sure why I have to do it here. There must be some sort of configuration that I'm, I've got changed. I didn't have to include memory before, and I'm not quite sure what the difference is, to be honest. But okay, sure, why not? Then, okay, then what we need to do is instantiate that or, or set the pointer. So direct 3D uh, equals, and now they want you to get away from using the new command. For some reason. Sure. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not entirely positive. I know why. Something about a memory leak. I oh, sure. But there you go. That instantiates the pointer. And then down here, all we have to do is change this from period to an arrow. And everything is fine. And that should run perfectly good. We should be fine. And there you go. I'm a little bit... Uh, it's strange that we need to include this. I'm not entirely sure I understand why. Because I didn't have to do it in my first build. And now I'm having to do it. And I'm not quite sure I get that. Clearly there's some sort of configuration difference between the two. But I don't really understand. You guys know, let me know. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, okay, that's all I wanted to do there. I wanted to get that direct instantiation of Direct3D out of the win main and make it a pointer. The reason being is just to, to keep the executable size down, uh, really. This really doesn't make any difference. Um, note you also do not have to uh, do anything about destroying this. Uh, it's a smart pointer. It will destroy automatically once it goes out of scope. So everything is fine there. Okay. All right. Let's go on to um, our Direct 3D class. Um, I should say a word about this, um, the pre-compiled header. If you go into project options and you go down, I've already got highlighted. If you go down to pre-compiled header, header under C, C++, We could do, uh, we could create a standard AFX file. Uh, we probably should do at some point, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Um, but it is something I'm aware of and um, usually a pretty good idea. It just keeps the compiler from having to pre uh, recompile every single thing every time you, you hit the compile button. When you put your common stuff in there, a lot of this stuff in WinMain probably could go into a standard AFX file, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. Okay. What we need to do next, guys, is create a function call to uh, create the, the Direct3D device. The Direct3D device is basically a representation of the adapter in your computer, the actual physical hardware. Um, so we need to grab a hold of that. So I'm just going to grab this, drop it down here, and we're going to say create the Direct3D 3D device. 
Okay, and we're going to call this create D three D device D three none of these direct three D device. Like such. Okay, and let's throw that up in. Whoops, stuck a thingy in there. Let's throw that up into here uh, in our private functions. And there you go. We'll go up to the main function and we'll call it. Um, and I'm just going to basically copy this. I, I don't want to rewrite this code out. So let's just grab this, drop it down here, fix my indentations because they're not going to be right. And we'll create direct 3D device. Okay, I don't know why that didn't work. There you go. Create direct 3D device. Okay. Should be good there. There's too many of these things. Get rid of that. And there you go. Okay. Creating the direct 3D device. Um, to do this, you first need to create a factory. Okay, so let's get started with that. So we're going to say if failed. Uh, create. DXGI factory. Why is this not coming up? Factory one. Okay, uh, you see it's not coming up. Um, and the reason it's not coming up is because we have not added in the um, the header file for DXGI yet. So let's go ahead and do that so that this knows what I'm talking about. Include uh, DXGI. We're gonna do one dash four. I know there's others, but that's the one that I've I, I've got set up. So I'm gonna do that. Um, .h. There you go. Okay, let's go back here and it should, yep, and now it knows what it is. Okay, so that's good. Uh, the DXGI factory, eh, it's, you don't worry too much about it. It's, um, it's direct 3D, it's, it's a complication that they add. <laughs> you just gotta make one for um, uh, getting the device. So in order to do this, what we need, if we can get this thing to come up, is we need uh, an ID and then the factory uh, pointer. So, or reference, I should say. So to do this, we're just gonna say um, ID PPV. This is just that same ARGS, that's that same conversion thing. And then the address or reference to uh, DX, DXGI factory. Now you notice I capitalized it, and that's entirely on purpose. And there you go. That should hopefully work. I need another thing. It's gotten to a point where there's so many of these things in here that it's hard to see. Um, okay. Uh, why is we getting an error there? Because it doesn't know what this is. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's put that in. Um, this is again going to be a pipeline object. So, com pointer to a um, i d three d x GI factory four. That's what I'm after. 
And then this will be the DXGI factory. Okay, now this should know what it is. Everything should be fine. There you go. Yay. All right, let's put in a, a, a fail condition. Just so that's handled. In case we fail, we'll at least know what's going on. Um, so we'll just do this. Goes here. That goes there. And there you go. All right, yeah, it looks good. Okay, so that picks up our factory. Um, and I'm keeping that in the uh, member of variables because we're going to need that factory more in the future. Um, so creating the device. Now, this is a little bit tricky because there's basically two steps. One, we're going to try to keep to create the hardware device. But if that fails, we're going to fall back to the software renderer. So if the hardware device fails, it's not a fatal error. We can fall back to the software renderer. Oh, we should probably throw a warning though, if that happens. So let's put in our, our condition. So here, the way this is called. So if failed, D3D12 create device. And the functions are, we need an adapter. So this is asking for which adapter you want. You could go through the trouble of uh, doing an enum on the adapters and figuring out which one is the best. I'm just going to, for right now, put in null pointer. That just tells the function, hey, I just want you to pick the first uh, viable adapter that we find. 99% um, of everybody's gonna have a single adapter in their machine. Uh, so this won't really apply. If they have more than one adapter in their machine, it'll just pick up the first one. We may want to modify that later on to pick up something a little bit better, but for right now, that's fine. Now the feature level. Okay, so I said before we were using DirectX 12, um, and that's going to require Windows 10. But the feature level on the, the adapter is different, right? That's It's the feature level of the video card. So we don't necessarily want to limit our audience on this one as much. So we'll go D3D feature level 11, zero. So basically it says uh, if it's level 11, which is basically DirectX 11 or higher on the video card, go ahead and use it. Um, we don't need to go all the way to 12 for the video card. Uh, so this will help you know for people with a little bit older Video cards, I'm not really even that old, all that old. And then of course we just need a, a, a reference to the device. So again, ID PPV ARGS, it's that standard conversion thing. Uh, and then the device. Okay, and it doesn't know what the device is. So we'll go in here and we'll throw that in. There's another comp pointer. Uh, let me just make sure I get the right device. I don't think there's anything tricky to it, but we'll figure it out. Um, IDD, yep. Interface D3D12 device. I think that's all I need. Device. And that should do it. Okay. Drop that in and. Again, there's probably not enough of these things in here. I'm totally losing track of how many that are necessary there. Uh, this is the wrong if. There we go. Okay, yep, got too many now. What is your problem? What is your di issue? Uh, this is misspelled. Okay, try again. Everybody happy now? I think everybody's happy now. I don't know why that's not turning purple, but it will. Okay, so this will create the device using the default adapter using a feature level of 11 or higher. It's, it, when I say that, I think what it, it does is it'll check the first adapter. If it doesn't meet these specifications, it'll go to the next one and try to grab whichever one will 
the first one it finds that it will meet these specifications. I believe that's how that works. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's true. Okay, if we don't uh, find one that works that way, output debug string. I'm going to throw a warning here just because um, warning uh, using software a renderer. Put a line feed on that, like such. Okay, that'll tell us. Okay, we've we're not using the hardware device; we're using a software renderer, and uh, you know, kind of important because it could slow things down. Okay, this is where we need to use our factory. So to create a software renderer, what we have to do if failed, we'll use our fail condition again. DXGI factory. We're going to do a, an enum on this one. Enum warp adapter. And again, ID PPV args. Uh, and this is going to be our warp adapter. And we don't need to keep this one. We're just going to use it this one time. So I'm going to stick it as a local variable. Um, and this is going to be, a, again, a com pointer to an IDXGI adapter. Warp, oops. Warp adapter, and it doesn't like it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. If we fail on that, now we've got a fatal error. So let's go ahead and drop that in. This is a uh, create a device. The function call was enumorp. And return false. Now, if that works, now basically what this is doing is it's um, uh, it's enumerating the available warp adapters. Warp guys stand is an acronym, and I can't remember what it stands for, but it's a uh, uh, it's basically. A software renderer. Okay, it's it's just going to be slower than the hardware output, but I think it's it's supported by the video card. That's why it's under create device. So um, I don't really understand the intricacies of all that. But anyway, assuming we get that, then we go on to our next step, which is to create the device, uh, which is just like we did before. D three D twelve create device. And this time, instead of using null pointer, we're going to go warp adapter. Dot get. And then our same feature level, D3D. Let's just copy this. In fact, we'll just um, copy this whole thing. Thank you. Can you do... <laughs> Why? Stop doing that. Like such. Oh, I lost the feature level for some reason. Okay, let's put that back in again. Okay, there you go, like such. And there's probably another thingy out here. Okay, so what this is saying is use the warp adapter instead of the Default adapter, but it's basically all the same as that. The only difference is that we enumerated the warp adapters, um, picked up the software version of the of the renderer, and stuck it in here instead of the default, which is the hardware. 
Okay, if this fails, again, we've got a, a critical failure state. So we will once again uh, do this. Um, yeah, that's fine. Just like that. Um, that's the same call as this. I should probably put something in here that says to differentiate these um, warp adapter, something like that. Just so we know, in case this, this goes off, this is where it's failing rather than this one. Right. Okay, and that's the device. And that should actually run and work. And let's see what we get. Let's hope that works. Oh yeah, uh, right, uh, a couple of things. First of all, we didn't return true, so let's do that. Um, should be right here, return true. Um, second of all, we've got an unresolved external. Uh, this is the linker thing. So um, in order for this to work, what we need to do is go back to Direct3D class, go up to here, and we're gonna add in a new library. Pragma comment lib comma quote. Uh, dxgi dot live. Um, I misspelled that. Right. Okay. Uh, why these are separate? I don't know. Um, they separated them out. Apparently, I guess dxgi has maybe different uses beyond direct three D. I'm not really entirely sure why they decided to do that, other than to make it more complicated. But sure, let's. Go ahead and do that. And we should have a successful build. Our error list is clear. Let's go ahead and run it. And there you go. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. We do all this work and we get exactly the same results, but we are creating a direct 3D device here. Um, so, you know, it's all good. Okay, guys, let's head on to the next step in our process. After you've created the direct 3D device, we now have the um, basically the a reference to the uh, the actual physical hardware that's in your card. Now we need to create a, a command queue. Create the command queue. Um, this is what we're going to use to pass commands into that device. I'm going to call this create command q u e u e. Q is such a weird word to spell. Uh, and we'll drop this over into here as well so that the uh, compiler knows what we're talking about. Okay. This is a relatively simple function. Um, we do need a structure, and this is going to be um, d3d12 underscore uh, command q description. Let's see, uh, and q, there's a lot of things in here. Q, U, E, U, E. -U -E. There it is, description. Jeez. <laughs> so we'll call this the Q U E U E description or desk for short. Okay, uh, just to make the compiler happy, we will do that to initialize it. Okay. Let's talk about the members of this, guys. It doesn't have too many members. It's really just got four. So we'll give it a type. We'll start with that. Um, and this is going to be um, basically the type of queue that we're going to be using. So D3D12 command. I lost my, my thing. List d3d12 command list type uh, direct. Okay, and there you go. 
Uh, QDesk dot priority. Um, we're going to set to D three D twelve command. Uh, Q D U E. Uh, this is going to be priority. Normal. Give it a normal priority. You can't give it a high priority if you want to. I mean, you know, sure. Uh, we will not. Then our next thing is going to be the um, the flags. And we'll set this to D3, D12. Command. Q. Flags. None. I think that maps to zero. Yeah, it does map to zero. So technically, because we did this, we don't have to do this. But I kind of liked it. In fact, all these things map to zero, don't they? <laughs> I could stop right here. Uh, because this next thing we're going to put is also zero. Um, but, you know, it's actually, I don't mind doing this. Uh, this is the node mask. Um, equals zero. I tend to like to fill out all of my structures. I think I missed, there was one in WinMain that I didn't fill out completely. Uh, somewhere maybe, I think it was in WinMain. Yeah, the window class, I didn't totally fill this out. But generally speaking, I like to totally fill out my structures. That way, if I have to come back here, I can see what the, the members are really easily. It's, you know, it's not that hard to do. Um, even though this is all zeros and we could just have left it right here and not done any of this. If I have to come back here, I can easily see what the numbers are. Um, so it's just a, to me, it, it's a helpful thing. Um, it is a little bit of clutter again, but uh, I think it's worth it myself. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> that's totally cool. Okay, so we're gonna call a new function. And what we're gonna call, we're gonna use the device for this because the device is going to handle the, the command queue, right? So create command queue. There it is down here. And the functions we need are um, the description. So we need a reference to the queue. I don't know what, what happened there. Q U. There it is right there. The queue des description. And then uh, a reference to the command queue. So this is going to be ID. Um, PPV ARGS again, that thing that converts things to void, and then the uh, reference to the command queue. Now we will need this um, in the future. We're not creating it for funsies. So uh, we're going to go ahead and drop it in here. Um, this is going to be of type uh, mm -hmm. when I do that, I D three D 12, uh, command Q. And this is going to be command Q. Okay. Let me fix this. So I screwed it up. Okay. All right, very nice. How are we doing recording wise? Not bad. Okay. So basically, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, we've created our command queue. Uh, we'll drop down here and put in this thing, uh, put in create command queue. And the function calls the same name as that. So create command queue, return false. Otherwise, return true. That's all there is to it. Uh, we'll put up in here. We'll grab this again. Make that function call. Uh, create command queue. Jeez, guys, come on. And copy paste. This is going to get a little bit unwieldy, guys. Um, all these 
you know, if statements and output debug strings, it, but I'll, I'll fix it later. It's not, um, it's not absolutely critical right now. It, it'll work the way it is. Um, I don't love it, but it'll work. So again, we run, we get exactly the same result. And there you go. I don't know why the, the debugger didn't come up. There it goes. Or diagnostics. Very nice. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Creating the command queue is actually fairly simple. Okay. Uh, one more, guys. And then I think we're going to call it. Um, there's going to be a third part to this series where we do the last three. So, uh, yeah. I know you have three part series on initializing the pipeline which is awesome remember when i thought i was going to be able to do this in one video that was so funny i'm such a funny guy okay create the swap chain so we're going to create a swap chain now create swap chain if you don't know how direct 3D works is basically you have a front buffer and a back buffer. Now it can't get more complicated than this, so don't take this as the only way you can do it. But in the simplest sense, you have a front buffer and a back buffer. The front buffer is the one that's being shown on the screen at the time. Right? The back buffer is the one that you're drawing to. And so what you do is you draw your entire scene onto the back buffer and then you do a pointer swap so that the back buffer becomes the front buffer. And then you clear that front buffer, or what was formerly the front buffer, uh, which is now the back buffer. You clear it, you redraw your next scene, and you just keep doing that. That's how it essentially works. Um, to do that, we're going to create a swap chain. Uh, so, first of all, we need to describe the swap chain. And this is a fairly complicated uh, structure. So, create swap chain. description right here and we'll call this swap chain description okay very nice okay now this guy is pretty complex so first of all just to make the compiler happy we'll do that if you don't do that, you're going to get a warning that you've, un you've got an uninitialized local variable. Um, even though I'm going to initialize every single <laughs> member of that uh, swap chain. Um, you know, these, all of these basically we're going to we're going to talk about. So buffer description. Buffer description itself is itself a structure. So there's several things to do with this. So first of all, the width will set to zero. Um, that's not actually going to set it to zero. That's just going to, um, of course, set it to whatever the, the, the default is. So yeah, uh, buffer description dot height, same thing. So this just sets it to the default. Um, in our case, I think it sets it to the size of the window. I think that's how it works. Um, or if we're in full screen, it'll set it to the size of the screen. <sighs> Swap chain desk dot buffer desk dot. So we did width height. Uh, we're going to do the numerator. Or sorry, we're going to do the refresh rate which itself is a structure, but it's only got two things. So the numerator, this is going to be, what, what we're doing here is setting the refresh rate of this uh, swap chain. So we'll set the numerator to 60. I'm just gonna copy that and paste it down. We'll set the denominator to one. That, that gives us a frame rate of 60 Hertz. Um, why we need to do that in the swap chain, I'm not entirely sure. I guess I'm not quite positive, to be honest. Now we need a format. 
So again, the buffer description dot format equals what? Uh, DXGI, this is where our formats live. Format. So we're going to use just a real common one. Red, eight, green, eight, blue, blue, eight, alpha, eight. So it's a 32 bit per pixel format with eight bits reserved for the red, green, blue, and eight bits reserved for the alpha channel. Um, that's just how that works. And then um, underscore you norm. In fact, it's right there. Nope, that's not it. Shyster. Um, you norm. Um, I can't remember what the you norm stands for, to be honest. I have to look it up. I think it's it has to do with the normal maps, but I could be totally off base on that. So I've chained desk um, dot uh, buffer desk, same thing. A lot of things in this guy right here. Dot. Okay, uh, we've done width, format, height, uh, refresh rate, scan line ordering. We'll set to dxgi underscore mode scan line. Uh, order unspecified. There it is right there. I'm going to set it to order unspecified. So we'll let the, the card deal with that itself. So we don't have to do it. Change description dot buffer description dot. I know guys, a lot of stuff in this one. What's what's left here? Scaling, I think is left. Scaling. Uh, we will again just set this to DXGI uh, mode scaling unspecified. Again, we'll let the uh, the card handle that. Okay, very nice. Believe it or not, we're done with that. Swap <laughs> that uh, part of the buffer desk is done, I believe. Sample description is yet another one that has stuff in it, but there's only two members of this one. So one, we'll set the count to one. Um, so let me see if I can remember what this this is. Let me see. Sample description describes the multi sampling parameters. Okay, yeah, this is for if you need to, um, if you want to do, um, uh, like if you did multiple back buffers, you could combine them and do like things like anti aliasing and stuff like that. We're not going to do that, so we're just going to set this to one. Chain description dot sample description dot quality equals zero. Okay, that just is basic. That means we're just going to basically pull the back buffer as is. We're not going to modify it by applying any kind of anti aliasing or anything like that. Okay, that's what that means. Sub chain description dot buffer usage. So what are we going to use that buffer for? Uh, DXGI usage underscore. Damn it. And I lost my thing. God freaking dang it. Render target output. That just says I want to use this to send to the um, Basically, the back buffer is where we're going to 
send all of our data. Swap chain description dot uh, buffer count. Ah, yes. This is where we need to do a thing. Okay. The buffer count. I'm going to set this to a variable called frame count. Which is not going to know what to do with. We're going to use this in a number of places. Basically, what it's asking is how many frames do we have? And in our case, we're going to have a front buffer and a back buffer, right? So there's going to be two frames. We're going to use this in several places. And um, in order to make sure that they're consistent and that I don't screw something up, I could just set this to two and that would work. Uh, but I'd have to send it, set it to two everywhere we use this. And it's used in several spots. Um, so just to make sure that I don't screw it up, and that frame count is always the same. We're going to set up a variable for it, uh, basically a constant. So let's go ahead and stick it under private. And I'm going to say static constant uh, uint frame count equals two. Um, why? Because I misspelled uint. How does one spell I misspell uint? Seriously. Okay, there you go. Normally, guys, I don't put code in header files, and this is borderline code, but this is a constant, and um, I don't, you know, this is this is a perfectly fine place to stick constants. So there you go. Uh, so that's the first place we're going to use frame count, but you'll see it again. You'll come, you will see it come up again. Uh, this is not the last place we're going to see it. So yeah. All right. Swap chain description dot output window is our next one equals window. Okay, now what's that? Um, I'm going to pass in here a handle to a window window. And this is going to require some change to the to the code. What it's asking for is what window are we out outputting to? Um, now if we're in full screen mode, this doesn't matter, but for in, in windowed mode, it would. Um, I'm going to drop that in there so that it's, it's there. And then we're going to get an error up in here because we didn't. Oh, well, actually, I haven't called it yet. So, um, OK, well, we'll hold off on that. Um, but I'm going to need to deal with it up in here. So um, for right now, this is fine. Basically, it's asking, yeah, what window are we outputting to? And now, if I think we're in full screen mode, I think this is either meaningless or we set it to full screen. I can't remember exactly what the deal is. Um, I'm sure I will find out in the near future. Windowed. For now, let's set this to true. Um, I said we were going to use full screen, uh, and we will. Uh, but for right now, we just want to get a window output. So I'm not going to worry about it for right now. Uh, we'll come back and change it later on. Uh, swap chain description swap effect. How do we do the swap effect? Uh, DXGI swap chain uh, effect underscore um, Damn. Swap effect flip discard is what we want. Basically saying once you've flipped the screen and, and the front buffer becomes the back buffer, you just discard that that back buffer then. I think it will clear it for you automatically like that. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Thank you so much. Swap chain desk. Why, why? Why are you giving me a problem? Stop it. Tut. <laughs> um, flags. Equals uh, DXGI swap chain flag allow mode switch. Basically saying we can swap back and forth between full screen and uh, windowed mode. 
Okay, I think I got everything. Let me just check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifteen. Yeah. Yep, that's everything. That's that's the whole swap chain description. Uh, in great huge detail. Um, that was the hardest part of this function, actually. The the rest of it's fairly straightforward. More or less. More or less. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a snag coming up, but it's not too bad. If failed. Uh, so for this, we need the factory. The XGI factory. And here we say create swap chain. And here we say, um, so we need the command queue for this. So command queue dot get, get function, like, like in C-sharp. Uh, we need the reference to the swap chain itself, or the swap chain description, I should say. So swap chain description. Uh, and we need a reference to the, um, the swap chain object. Now I'm going to create a temp swap chain, like such. So let's go up here and say um, com pointer. And this will be idxgi swap chain temp swap chain. There you go, like such. And that should work. Why is it not working? Uh, temp swap chain. As I misspelled it. Didn't misspell it. I miscapitalized it. All right, there you go. Um, we're going to create a temp swap chain. The reason why is that this, this command automatically creates a uh, swap chain of type swap chain, which, you know, makes sense. Sure. Um, we have a failure state here. So let's go ahead and deal with that uh, create swap chain and the function call was create swap chain so there you go like such now um, there's a reason I'm creating a temp swap chain because the swap chain that I actually want to use is not a swap chain it's it's going to be of type com pointer uh, IDXGI swap chain three is I think what I want to call is the interface that I want. And this will be our swap chain. Okay. It's just an interface guys. So in order to convert from this swap chain to a swap chain three, all we have to do is, is call a function. Um, it, this is sort of similar to a static cast, but you can't do static casts on com pointers. So they give you a function for this. So temp swap chain dot as, and then our real swap chain, swap chain. And that's all there is to it. That gives you a um, That gives you a swap chain three. Um, this does return an H result. Um, so I guess I probably should do a, a failed state on it. I didn't do this before, but it doesn't hurt. It's three of these, right? Okay, let's just do a failed state. Uh, create swap chain. Um, As. Uh, yeah, yeah, not very helpful, really, honestly, but it'll work. It's fine. Okay, so that swaps over to our that goes from a, a regular swap chain to a type three swap chain, which gives us a little bit more functionality uh, in the swap chain. Um, I don't know if we'll even end up using it, but it doesn't hurt. Um, one other thing I want to do in this function is to associate that with our window. 
So it failed a DXGI factory. And we're going to make window association with our window. Um, and then there's a flag here. So let's go DXGI, the flag that I've used, and this is kind of based on the the Microsoft code, MWA, no alt enter, at least for right now. And then we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay. There's one other thing I want to do, um, and that is we got to keep track of our, our frame index. So I'm going to come under here and um, make a new category. This is not going to be a pipeline object so much. It's going to be a synchronization object. Synchronization. I hope I spelled that right. Objects. And this is going to be our first one. So uint uh, frame index. Okay. And uh, direct three or the compiler will complain if we don't set that to something. So I'm going to say set frame index equals zero. Why am I getting a squiggly here? Oh, <laughs> frame index is under. I just defined it. It's just being slow. Okay. We're going to keep track of our frame index just as a synchronization thing. So <clears throat> that again, sorry. Frame index equals. What does it equal? So we'll go for the swap chain. Uh, get current back buffer index, and that'll set it. And I don't think this fails or, or with any sort of failure state. So yep, we're good there. And then from here we can return true. Very nice. And that creates the swap chain. A couple of steps in there, like the biggest one is, is setting up the swap chain description. Um, we'll be coming back to this and kind of adjusting all this stuff as we get further into the thing. There's, there's plenty here that can be changed. So yeah, we'll be doing that. Okay, uh, we need to call this function. So let's go ahead and give it a call. But we're going to run into a little bit of an issue here. So what did I just say that was? Um, great swap chain. Of course, it wants the window, right? So let's send it a window. But we don't know what the window is. So I'm, what I'm going to do is set this to hwnd window. So initialize needs a window now. And um, I've got to set that up in here. hwnd window. Okay, so that all works, except now, back in WinMain, when we called initialize, we didn't send it a window. So we're going to send it the window handle that we have we made right here. This is the window that was created, and that's the window handle that we need to send to initialize so that it can send it down into create swap chain so that swap chain knows to associate the window that we created with the swap chain. Okay. Now let's go ahead and build that, and we should not have any errors as far as I'm aware. Looks good, the error list is clean, and if we run it, we get our window. Absolutely nothing has changed, except we are doing stuff behind the scenes, right? So very nice. You'll notice, guys, I'm not destroying anything. Um, the comp pointers are handling that for me. I'm not. I shouldn't be leaking any memory at this point. Everything should be destroying itself. That's the beauty of uh, smart pointers. So, yeah. Yeah. 
there you go. I think that's everything I wanted to get done. There's nothing else I really wanted to talk about. Oh, there's one other thing I did want to fix in WinMain that I kind of missed. Um, this H instance, we took out the, the name of the, the variables that we weren't using, uh, but I didn't do it over here in the declaration. We probably should. The only bad thing about the, the highlighter on the compiler is that I can't tell what's actually lit. Okay. In declarations, guys, you technically don't need to put in the variable names. That is true. Uh, you can't, you know, there's a case to be made to, to do it like this. That's cleaner. It's maybe borderline easier to read, but the advantage of having the, the names in the, in the, in the functions themselves or in this, uh, declaration is that it helps to tell you what the function does, uh, I find. So really, when I'm looking at a header file, guys, I should be able to tell what every all these functions do without ever having to look at a, at the CPP file. Um, if it's a well-written header, that's what's going to happen. I, I'd be able to look at all this stuff, these things, and tell what they are. Uh, a, based on their name, the function name, should tell you a good deal about what that function does. Hopefully, it should. Otherwise, you need to rename it. Uh, the return value should help to tell you how that function works. And then the parameter list is another way of telling what that function, you know, how it works, what it does. And I should be able to see this and go, okay, I know exactly what these do and never have to look at the CPU code. Um, hopefully. I mean, you know, to an extent. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not a 100% fast rule, but um, like, for instance, from this, I probably couldn't tell that create swap chain actually associates the window with it. I'd have to come into the CPP code to look at that, but eh, you know, I'm nitpicking there. Um, in a general sense, I know exactly what this function does based on its name and its parameter list. And anyway, that's the reason why I don't do this. Um, you can do that. That's totally fine. It creates smaller, more compact code. It's cleaner, but I like to have the parameters names there just to help me understand what the function does. Okay, you're you're welcome to do it differently. Um, so anyway, there you go. Our code is again done. We have come a long way in creating our pipeline. We've created the device, we've created the command queue, and we created the swap chain. Um, all things that we are going to need to run the pipeline. Okay, in the next episode, what we are going to be doing, guys, is we are going to be finishing off the uh, the pipeline. There's three more functions to do. They're all actually relatively quick and easy. Yeah, there's not a lot to them. Actually, they're they're simpler than what we've done. The hard ones, basically, is what I'm trying to get out here. So the the last three should be fairly simple. Um, I'll try to get those done uh, in the very near future. Uh, I might have time this week to do another episode and uh, edit it and put it up, but I'll have to see. I'm not entirely 100% convinced I'll have time. It's just a matter of if my schedule allows for it. So anyway, okay, guys. Thanks you very much. I think that's all I wanted to get done. We are done here, so we will stop here and we'll pick this back up in the next episode. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.